I know I'm a little bit late to the party, but Ben Johnson is staying, and Mike Valeni will join us today on a Wednesday edition of Locked on Lions. You are Locked on Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And a pleasant good Wednesday afternoon, everybody. Locked On Lions, Locked On Podcast Network. Matt Derry with you on this a Wednesday, January 18th and a Thursday, January 19th. Thanks for making us your first listen, checking us out on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Locked on Lions today, brought to you by our good friends at Bet Online. Bet Online, as you covered this season, with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Follow us on Twitter at Derry Speaks, D E R Y Speaks, at Locked On Lions, on the old Twitter machine, the Matt Derry Facebook fan page, and as always, on YouTube. Locked on Lions YouTube channel. Shout out to everybody watching us on the video side today. Coming up on the show this afternoon, Michael G. Valeni. Yes, uh, many of you uh, love to hate him, but Mikey V is going to join us from 97 Won the Ticket uh, a little bit later on in the show. Talk about the Lions and how excited he is for next year. Yes, Mike is into the Lions. We'll get into that coming up momentarily. But the big story and the big news, what we have to lead with today. Uh, Clark, did you tell everyone the good news? Um, anyway, that's a little, uh, vacation reference. Ben Johnson is staying. Yes, that's correct. Ben Johnson, Lions offensive coordinator, hot commodity for to be, to become a head coach leader, uh, leader in the clubhouse to take the Carolina Panther job told the Panthers yesterday, according to Tom Pelissero from NFL network, he informed interested teams. He's staying in Detroit. Pelissero reported last night after, of course, we did the podcast. Isn't that how it always goes? Quote, Johnson was slated to travel Wednesday to interview with the Panthers, but he feels Detroit is building something special and wants to see it through. Should be a hot head coaching name again next year. Amazing. Amazing. This is great news. When is the Lions, when have the Lions ever had a, an assistant coach that was a hot commodity, number one? Then number two, Ben Johnson's telling teams, I'm out. I want to stay in Detroit and see it through. Like, oh my goodness. How great is this? The offensive coordinator who put the Lions on the map. Top five offense this year. Turned Jared Goff around. Turned Jamal Williams into a thousand yard rusher. Turned Brock Wright into a late game threat. You know? (laughs) Is staying. Now, some things could have happened. Maybe she loved Hamp, threw a lot of money his way. I, may, maybe he said, the heck with David Tepper. I'm not going to, you know, meet with him. He's too New York for me. He's too, I don't know, maybe Sean Payton is getting the Carolina job. There's a lot of things that could have happened. But the bottom line is he's staying. He interviewed in Houston. He interviewed in Indy. He interviewed in Carolina. And he wants to be here. Incredible. Awesome news. Huge news for this organization. And when you have that chemistry and you have that uh, uh, consistency with the coaching staff where everybody comes back, you're not constantly changing coordinators and your secondary coach goes here and your linebackers coach moves here. There were teams this year in the NFL, including in Carolina, where guys were leaving during the season. Matt Rule, who went to Nebraska, was hiring Panthers assistants during the year. And they were bolting. You know, this is the kind of stuff that used to happen to the Lions, whether they were in Pontiac up at the Silverdome or at 222. Now, staff is intact, consistency, and Ben Johnson sticking around. I think that's awesome. And I'm sure we'll find out maybe the next few days or weeks or whatever. Johnson got a new deal or Johnson got a raise or, or maybe he'll, someone will, interview him and get a hold of him and, and he'll explain the situation. Maybe maybe he looked at the Carolina situation and went, who's my quarterback? Maybe he looked at the Indy situation and went, Will Levis or C.J. Stroud? No, thank you. 
Maybe he looked at the Houston situation and said, that's a bleep show down there, which it's been for years. I'm staying right here. I'll wait it out and see what opens up next time. It's pretty cool. Great news for the Lions. That is for sure. All right, Mike uh, Mike Valeni is going to join us coming up next. First, we want to tell you about that delicious treat known as Built Bar. Looking for a delicious treat, but don't want all the fat and the calories. That's why you got to try a Built Bar. We got through the holidays. I know my goal is to eat a little bit healthier. I pretty much have a Built Bar, a Built Puff, like every single day. I was just talking to the legend, the legend over at uh, Edge Fitness, the great Gunner. And I said, Gunner, you got I'm getting this guy a box of Built Bars because they're healthy. They taste great. You got to do it. Shout out to Gunner Russell, big Lions fan. What makes Built Bar so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And they come in great flavors. Churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond. I love the cookies and cream. You get the mint chocolate, whatever you want. They've got it at Built.com. And the great thing is now you can get Built Bars at your local Walmart or I even saw it last week at Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy section and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or the coconut puffs. If you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with our Hit Flavors Brownie Batter and Churro. You can thank me later. We love our friends at Built Bar. And, of course, you can go to Built.com. As promised, here on a Wednesday edition of Locked On Lions, it's our friend Mike Valeni, 97 won the ticket, the Valeni and Rico show, the top sports show in the in the city, I think in the country. Mike does a, a fantastic job, and let's talk some Lions with Mikey V. What's up, buddy? What's up, pal? How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Audio only for you. Let's just, it just keeps the intrigue going. That's what I love about you, the mystery. It's called I'm in the car, and I mean, what are we doing here? I mean, come on. <laughs> Please. Everybody knows I got a big nose. They don't need to see it on video. Oh, man. Break. We're get, you're, getting, you're getting locked. Oh, that's right. So talk to me. What do we what do we got here? What do we got? Well, uh, are you as stunned as I am? Like, I was at dinner last night. My phone's blown up. Ben Johnson staying. I'm like, wait, what? Like, this never happens to the Lions. No, but you know what? It's the biggest acquisition of their offseason. I think it is absolutely the key in them winning this division next year. Because when you have an asset, which Ben Johnson is, and you get that extra year of continuity, year three for Goff in the system, you know, year two for JMO, et cetera, it pays huge dividends. The fact that this staff that got this thing turned around this year, un- almost unthinkable from the one in six start, the fact that you keep the band together, as you and I like to say, Matt, I think it's going to be a driving force in them winning the North next year. You know, you've been on this uh, for a few weeks, actually a few months, about you like the direction. And everybody knows this that listens to you and I listen to the show and we work together and know each other well. It's almost like, all right, you're going to tune in in the afternoon and you're going to get the, the straight dope. It's not going to be homerism. It's not going to be overly, oh, this team's going 0-17. But you, you seem to be one of the early on folks uh, in, whether it's media or just on the air, just you, you like the direction very early on. What was it in August and September that sold you? Um, yeah, I mean, and I know a lot of people were like, well, why, why is he saying this? I thought they'd win nine games. Um, because I think they're at least they're building correctly. You know, Matt, I don't remember a time in my career here where they've had an offensive line I cared about until now. Um, they've got a one, two punch at running back. And I know it didn't work with Swift cause he was banged up seemingly all year. Um, you've got these developing weapons and defensively, I thought they would be able to be mediocre. Now I can't explain the start. I mean, the one and six and Dan Campbell spitting a bit in a couple of games, he was a couple of weeks. I mean, Matt, you and I talked a few months back and it was like, Man, he's two, three weeks away from maybe losing the whole thing. Um, but they didn't. And they battled. And they. I think that the day that everyone knew it was real was when they went to MetLife. And they didn't just beat the Giants. They broke them. They just physically battered them. And it was like, 
I remember going on the air and telling people like, guys, that's the, that's the billboard for what the Dan Campbell era is supposed to be about. They are going to roll in and batter people. And they just kept it going. And I couldn't be Matt. I've never respected the lions the way I do right now. And that that's just earned. I think it's earned whether you buy tickets, whether you watch games on TV and give them your time, um, no matter what it, or if you're just an observer like myself, like they have to earn that respect and they are. And as I said on the air yesterday, they would have beaten a vast majority of the teams that played this weekend on super wild card weekend. That's why it stinks that they didn't quite get in. They're good, Matt. Well, you know, what is it? I want to go back to the Ben Johnson thing for a second. What do you think went down as I like to call it two, two, two rod wood drive that kind of not kind of, you know, sealed the deal here. I mean, is it Sean Payton maybe going to Carolina and maybe they're, you know, maybe Ben Johnson's not the leader, or do you think it was the Lions stepping up? I mean, I'm a big fan of telling you multiple things can be true, right? So here's the other part of it. When you start looking at this, Ben Johnson's young, and if we look at the situations that are truly available, how many of them are positive situations? How many of them do you have a quarterback you want to work with? or an offensive line, or whatever it is. Here's the other problem. Let's say Arizona is your landing spot. You don't have a general manager. You're saddled with Kyler Murray, and in his first year, he won't play. Blown out ACL. Not great. Denver, it's Russell Wilson. Enough said. Uh, You go to Carolina, it's an overbearing New York owner in David Tepper. He's going to dictate what quarterback you end up having. That's not a great spot. Uh, Indianapolis, Meddlesome, Ursay. Um, Mr. Mr. Ursay. That's Mr. Ursay to you. Mr. Ursay <laughs> to me. But it's, Matt, I, I, I know there's only 32 of these, but if I'm Ben Johnson, I know I've, I've been hot to trot this offseason, and we're just getting warmed up. I look at it like I'm going to have a top five offense next year. We're going to win this division, and I'm going to get to be more selective. Um Look, I I was hoping he would come back. I told people, you know, you guys need to really recognize that while this is big boy school and if people don't want your coordinators, shout out Mark D'Antonio, there's a problem. You just hope you can get that extra year. So I think the Lions are gearing up next year for, for what I hope is the best year they've had in my two decades in this town where they host a playoff game and win a playoff game and make a run. Like that's Matt. I I think they can really do this, and Ben Johnson's a huge part of that. Yeah, no, he's been fantastic, and uh, I, I don't think anybody is uh, uh, you know going through his computer and having to do an investigation on him. Just saying. Okay, not going there. <laughs> I'll tell you, is this, no, I know what you're alluding to. My point is, you know, at what at what point is there a lack of institutional control? How Ward Manuel still has a job is truly incredible. Oh, you know what? Whatever, man. I'm sure the Detroit media will be all over it with real coverage. That's right. Real real radio? What about real radio? Yeah. Oh, tatting it up. T-A-T. Got to do it. We could talk about talk. Uh, it's, Matt, it's a, it's a joke. If it was happening at Michigan State, there, there'd be there'd be ESPN helicopters above campus. It, it's a total it's a total farce the way that school's covered. But let, let's just keep it possible. <laughs> Mike Valeni with us, ninety seven on the ticket afternoon drive two to six. All right, so what's the next move now? Like you said, the biggest offseason move is keeping Ben Johnson. What's next on your list? Do you want a quarterback at eighteen? We're not they're they're not taking one at six. But what what are you looking at as the next big move here? I mean, all right, so we can do it two ways. I, I think that the, the easiest way, but it's a cop-out, is just, look, you take the best available players. Like, you've got all this draft capital, five of the top 82. Just stack talent. Don't worry about position. Don't worry about – just stack talent. But we can do better than that. Uh, for me, I'll tell you one thing I am looking at, and we've got a long way until, you know, April and the draft, etc. But with pick six and pick 18 – if I've got an opportunity to move up and get a Will Anderson, um, you know, move up. And I'll give you a name I want you to look out for. And maybe you and I will do this again before the draft. But a name I'm intrigued by. 
I don't know schematically if Aaron Glenn and Campbell would want him, but Tyree Wilson out of Texas Tech, 6'6", 270, a sack artist, a real true edge. My priority is getting Aiden Hutchinson, somebody opposite him, full time, that I can make this a DeMarcus Ware, Von Miller, Denver Broncos type deal. I want two non-negotiables on the edge. I want to reinvest in Aiden Hutchinson, make his life easier. And whatever that is at six, that's what I would do. All right. And then at 18, Matt, the door's wide open for me. And I don't want people to cringe when I say it. But like if you we've already seen Brad Holmes commit to their board. They had a grade on Jamison Williams. He was the number one wide receiver. Right. Yeah. Drake London. Yep. Better than Wilson. Better than they went and got him. Now, let's say they have a grade on Quentin Johnson out of TCU, that big physical perimeter red zone guy. Am I going to have a problem at 18? No way. What if they have a grade on B. John Robinson and it's similar to Saquon Barkley? Am I going to have a problem at 18? No. And for people who go, well, we have Jamal Williams. Do you? Do you you got to pay him. DeAndre Swift, I love. I'm his biggest fan, but availability is a skill. He's never available, and I'm not re-signing him. I hate to break it to Lion fans. I'm not. I'm going to use what I got, and I'm going to cast him right out there into free agency. So my point to you is whether it's a corner, whether it's a skill player, whether it's depth up front on the D-line, what if it's a guard? What if they take the best guard? What if Osiris Torrance out of Florida is there? And you now, all of a sudden, you build what Dallas had, a real superstar O-line. Matt, there's really nothing they could do at 18 that would bug me. So 18's the value pick. If you're asking me at six, I want the best defensive player available, preferably an edge rusher, because I want to continue to reinvest in Aiden and reinvest in that front. And a better pass rush is going to make my, my back end of my defense look better. Give me, uh, give me Brian Brissett at six and Joey Porter at eighteen, and let's roll. No arguments. And Brissett didn't have the season a lot of people expected, but people have to remember he had a tragedy in his family, lost his fifteen-year-old sister, took a leave of absence from the Clemson team. He was banged up. Turn on the tape from two thousand twenty-one. Brissett is a game wrecker. Oh yeah, he's a game wrecker. Um, so I would have no issue. More of an interior guy, but there's no issue there either, Matt. They're, they really, this is the luxury of once you become a good team, you can do just about whatever you want in the draft, and it makes sense. Mike Valenti with us, 97 won the ticket. A couple more questions for him, and I want to ask about the defense a little bit as well that's coming back. BetOnline.net, your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, analysis. Get all the latest odds and trends for every professional sport, amateur sports as well. NBA going on right now, NHL, NFL playoffs this weekend. You want to know what the lines are, over-unders, all of that. You go to betonline.net. If you love sports podcasts, I got those as well at BetOnline. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game starts. Mike Valeni with us, 97-01. The ticket, of course, afternoon drive from 2 to 6. You mentioned before about bringing Jamal Williams back. You know, John Kaminsky's of the world, the Will Harris's, some of those guys, Mike, are there to bring back on this defense. Where else are you addressing things? And what do you do with somebody like Alex Anzalone, who you know Aaron Glenn loves? But could they up could they upgrade at linebacker? Of course they can. It's kind of a weird spot. Yeah, I, you know, and again, we got to let the draft board develop. But, you know, at, at 18 or in the second round, I'm drafting a linebacker. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go and get someone. I, You can absolutely do better than Alex Anzalone. They need upgrades at corner. They need a lead dog at corner, which, hell, every team does. But, Matt, let's assume they can make one big splash in free agency. It's at linebacker or corner for me. But with five of the top 82 picks, I'm going to go in underneath that acquisition and I'm going to stack it. So let's say they sign a corner. I don't even have a name for you. I don't even care. It doesn't even matter. They sign a corner. I'm going to go and draft one too. Yeah. You can't have enough of them. I mean, no. here, look, look at what the Giants did this weekend against the Vikings. Almost 30% of their snaps, they had six or more defensive backs on the field. 
There were there were times the Giants had seven defensive backs on the field. You can't have too many. So really, it's about beefing up corner, but the linebacker level. Part of stopping the run is yeah, if we fill every gap up front or make some splash plays, you need a linebacking core that's able to capitalize on it. They need to get better there. Are you by by the way? And you just you made me think of something else because you were talking about uh, corners. Is are you bringing DJ Chark back? Uh, I know these guys are all going to Brad Holmes saying they want to come back, but you bringing him back at a, at a high price tag when you, you got to move Jamison Williams up? No, no, and you just you nailed it. That's why I talked about drafting a wide receiver. Um, I think there's a pecking order here, and in order to justify the JMO selection, he has to be uh, one of the top two guys in target share on this team, and it's going to be Amon Ross St. Brown. And it's going to be Jamison Williams. Now, if I draft a third guy on a rookie wage scale contract and I get five years of control, well, that guy could be third or fourth in target share, and I don't have any problems. So, yeah, I, I just – it's not a DJ Chark thing. I told people they'd like the player if he could stay healthy. But he served his purpose. I'm not giving a multi-year deal to that guy. He's an ancillary piece. So, no. No. All right, this weekend's games, and I know I know you got Cash the Ticket, your podcast, which is just awesome. You and Jim Costa have a lot of fun with with, with the games and the in the betting. You you look at the the board that's still out here in the AFC and NFC. What jumps out at you in terms of could there be an upset here? Are your Giants gonna 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 give Philly a run? No, no, no. no, no. You need to behave now. They haven't won in Philly since you were at Syracuse, so let's just leave it alone. They they. Look, it's been a wonderful year. It was a lot of fun seeing them beat the Vikings because everybody, including Lion fans, knew they were a fraud. Uh, but, like, look, it's been a fun year. Let's pack the bags. Uh, it's probably done. The only way they're going to compete with Philly, much less beat them, is if Jalen Hurts is still severely limited um, and or, not that I'm rooting for it, I'm just being honest, like, and or something happens where he gets knocked out of the game. He is playing injured. Like, who are we kidding? You know, you land on your shoulder the wrong way and you're out and Gardner Minshew's in. It takes on a different dynamic. The point is, the game that jumped out to me, actually, Matt, was was Buffalo um, being favored by north of a field goal, currently sitting at four. Cincinnati, I'm rooting for Cincinnati, but Matt, the loss of Lyle Collins, the loss of Alex Kappa, and now Jonah Williams with a, a, a dislocated kneecap, they're down arguably their three best linemen. And I know Buffalo doesn't have Von Miller, but Rousseau's back. They've got more of their pass rushers back. I just feel like after watching Cincinnati without those guys, and once Jonah Williams was out, Joe Burrow turned into three-step drop theater. I mean, it looked like Joey Harrington. So are you going to go on the road to Buffalo and you can't stretch the field? And look, I know Josh Allen continues to turn it over, but if he doesn't, how is Cincy going to play in a shootout when you can't push the field because you can't protect your guy? I thought Buffalo jumped out with the spread and honestly, not ready to commit to it. Didn't Dallas catch your eye a little bit? That line was a little smaller than I imagined at three and a half. Purdy looked shaky in the first half of that Seattle game. He's primarily lit up bad defenses. And you saw what Dallas did to Brady, did to that O-line. I kind of wonder if da- if they're kind of telling you, hey, Dallas is real. Here's my problem. I, can I take a team whose, whose kicker can't make an extra point? I mean, Brett Meyer missed five straight extra points. He may as well have been MSU's kicker. <laughs> so it's just – honestly – so those are the two that jumped out at me was Buffalo and Dallas. I, I, the Jags thing, I don't know what to do with at eight and a half. Giants at seven. Like, if you're demanding it, I, I'd lean Philly um, and, and lean Jacksonville. When's the last time the homes covered a big number at home? It's been a while. Yeah. So, yeah, but the, the Buffalo one was number one for me, and, and number two would probably be Dallas, provided Brett Myers got his head screwed on straight. Mike Valeni, 97 on the ticket. Also, uh, Boomer and Valeni, that uh, show that you can hear on the ticket and also uh, via podcast. Are you guys doing playoff shows? Oh, yeah. We're going straight through the Super Bowl. Wow, that's very cool. Mike and Boomer Sice, and of course, Mike and Rico Beard on the ticket, 2-6, to six, and cash the ticket as well. Uh, he is everywhere, folks. Mike, always uh, love talking to you, brother. Thanks for doing it.
Do, yeah, let's do it. And we'll do it again near the draft because probably a lot of what I just said about the draft won't apply because you know how this changes. I mean, there will be a whole new list of names up there. But, yeah, anytime, Matt. There he is, Mike Valeni with us from The Ticket on a Wednesday edition of Locked On Lines.